This is News 4 at 4. Okay. Hey, from the, from the benefit of hindsight, where I'm sitting now, that of course it was not the right decision. It was a wrong decision, period. There's no, no excuse for that. Well, it's a disturbing revelation in the Uvalde Elementary School shooting. Investigators say they made the wrong call in not going into the school and killing the suspect as fast as possible. And good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Joe Hart. And I'm Shelby Sheehan. Welcome to News 4 at 4. And we're learning more about why police responded the way they did to that Texas elementary school shooting this week. And more than an hour passed from when the shooter entered the school to when he was shot and killed. It's our top story this afternoon. Texas DPS Director Steve McGraw says the situation was mishandled by the police on the scene. He says they should have gotten into the classroom sooner while students were calling 911. Reporter Matt Roy has more on why it took so long and what was lost in communication. At 11.27, a teacher inside the building prompts the west side door open. Ramos crashed at 11.28 and started walking towards the school, shooting in windows of the school as he went. He got into the classroom at 11.33 and fired more than 100 rounds. Officers cornered Ramos into classrooms 111 and 112. McCross says the lead officer on the scene was UCISD Chief Pete Arredondo. On-scene commander considered it a barricaded subject and that there was time and there were no ch more children at risk. Obviously, ob obviously, you know, based upon the information we have, there were children in that classroom that were at risk and it was, in fact, still an active shooter situation and not a barricaded subject. First 911 call came from inside the classroom from a student at 1203. There were multiple others at 1210, 1213, 1216, 1219, 1221 and 1236. At around 12:45, the little girl in the classroom said, "Quote, please send in the police now." The room was not breached and the subject was not killed until 12:50. And for the benefit of hindsight, where I'm sitting now, of course it was not the right decision. It was the wrong decision. Very there's no, no excuse for that. It's not clear what communication Arredondo was getting or if he knew there were people alive in the classroom when he made the call that this was not an active shooter but a barricaded subject. You said the first call came in inside the classroom at 12.03 and you breached it at 12.51. How many students died in those 48 minutes? I don't have that answer. We're looking at it right now. McCross says police had to wait for a key from the janitor to finally get into the room. Information continues to pour in here in Uvalde minute by minute. We do know that the FBI is on scene and the regional director spoke at the press conference today. We will continue to bring you the most up to date information as soon as we get it. Reporting in Uvalde, I'm Matt Roy. Well, President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden will travel to Uvalde on Sunday. The White House says that they will meet with the community leaders there, religious leaders, and the families of the victims. More details about that trip are expected to be released at a later time. A student-led group pushing for gun control is planning a protest here in Reno. March for Our Lives says the protest will take place Saturday, June 11th at Reno City Plaza. The group is also planning a similar protest in Washington, D.C. and other cities across the country. Four years ago, March for Our Lives held nationwide protests after the school shooting in Parkland, Florida. Well, lawmakers are facing increased pressure to act following the shooting in Texas. CNN reports Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell asked Texas Senator John Cornyn to negotiate with Democrats on bipartisan legislation. A group of senators met for a discussion yesterday, including Democrats Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. Now, the two have notably opposed eliminating the filibuster to pass legislation. Filibuster should not be needed at all to be even talking about throwing out the one tool that we have that gets us that keeps us working and at least talking together without that we've had nothing you get no checks and balances ideas discussed include an expansion of background checks as well as so-called red flag laws mcconnell says he's hopeful a bipartisan agreement will be reached the 2022 primary election it kicks off tomorrow when early voting starts at 24 different locations all around washoe county Ben Marjad has everything you need to know before you cast your ballot. Preparations underway at a Ray Lee's and Collin Ranch. It's one of 24 voting locations across Washoe County, open every day through June 10th from 10 in the morning to 6 at night. You can vote or drop off your mail ballot at any of these locations. 
not to mention register to vote at any vote center up to Election Day. You can do same-day voter registration June 1st uh, through the 10th during early voting or on June 14th for Election Day. Crucial for a closed primary, you can also change your party affiliation right before you vote. If you got a mail ballot but plan to vote in person, you can do two things. One, bring it in when you vote. And surrender it to the vote center um, and then we'll take that, cancel that ballot and allow you to vote. But if you don't have your ballot on you, you'll just have to sign an affidavit promising that you're not going to vote the mail ballot. A lawsuit that sought to expand vote counting observation was rejected this week, so observation rules will be the same as in previous elections. Observers do have a bigger area this time, though. The demand has grown substantially bigger. So we do now actually have a built-out observation area for people to be able to sit and watch. Um, it definitely accommodates far more people than we've had in the past. The county will also stream the process 24-7 on their YouTube channel. In Reno, Ben Marjot, News 4, on your side. All right, and to see our interactive map showing all 24 early voting and Election Day voting locations in Washoe County, just go to our website. It's all right there at mynews4.com. Well, be cautious if you're out on the water this Memorial Day weekend. Lake wind advisories are in effect for Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. This is a time lapse video taken today from Diamond Peak showing the choppy waters out on Lake Tahoe. Small boats, kayaks and paddle boards are more prone to capsizing in those choppy conditions. It's advised that you stay off the lake until things clear up. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Matt Monroe. And Matt, not the best time to go boating this weekend, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're going to see those winds again tomorrow. The chop on Lake Tahoe, two to four foot waves. So yeah, tomorrow is not good. Maybe a little bit better Sunday. And then if you have to have the pick day this weekend, Monday is going to be the day for that to go boating. Reno air quality is back in the good zone today. It was moderate yesterday from a little bit of smoke. 79 degrees or high today, topping out at about 82. Carson City, you're at 73. mid 60s in Truckee, low to mid 80s in Fallon, and Winnemucca. So the weather headlines again, more lake wind advisories today, tonight, right through tomorrow. Temperatures cooling down through your holiday Monday, but Memorial Day does look nice, sunny, cool, and much lighter winds. We'll tell you more about the big weekend forecast coming up in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Matt. Well, developing news now, at least three people are dead, eight others hurt after a crash on a Northern California highway. Police say it happened yesterday afternoon in Yolo County, that's north of Sacramento. They say a van drifted off the side of the road, rolled over multiple times, and hit a tree. Eleven people were inside at the time. Three of them died, and the others were sent to the hospital with major to moderate injuries. Investigators say it's unclear what led up to that crash. Class was canceled today at Sepulveda Elementary School over concerns about smoke. The school sent out an email to families saying one of the air conditioning units broke at about 8 o'clock this morning, which caused the smoke. Parents were able to pick up students shortly after 9. The school says it will resume classes on Tuesday morning after the three-day Memorial Day weekend. The city of Reno's micro mobility project is getting pushed back because of supply chain issues. The city says the project won't be finished before the Memorial Day weekend. Lanes on Virginia Street and Fifth Street will remain closed until the city has all the materials it needs and can install them. Now, the project aims to make downtown Reno safer and more accessible for pedestrians, bicyclists and scooters. The city says the completion date is still up in the air right now. A portion of the Truckee River path will be closed next week. The closure will last between 6 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon, Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, the closed area will be between Fisherman's and Gateway Parks for path maintenance under the bridges there. Detours will be in place. Gas prices continue to rise as people head out of town for the holiday weekend. Zach Slotmaker joined us now. He's up at Gold Ranch with more on gas prices and some tips on how to avoid paying more than you need to. Maybe a weather report too with all that wind, Zach. Extra hairspray today, Joe. 5.69 a gallon here at Gold Ranch, but that is far from being the worst of what you might see if you head outside of our area. You can see the line here, the pack of people here right now just cleared out not too long ago, but if you're heading down 395 for those maybe heading down a mammoth or through Bridgeport, you're going to want to plan your commute very carefully where you'll be paying a lot of money for gas, especially in places like Bridgeport, Mono County area, June Lake. You're looking at $7 a gallon minimum. It does not get below $7 until that Mammoth Lake area. And here in Reno, according to Gas Buddy, the cheapest is $5.39 a gallon at City Gas off Virginia Street. Right now, Costco at $5.44. 
A lot of people having to make that decision of should I stay or should I go with prices like this and Memorial Weekend ahead. Well, I certainly wish they were lower. I'd be driving my 66 Fairlane and not my girlfriend's Subaru. It certainly uh, eats away at the funds. Yes, absolutely. I can't wait for gas prices to go down, which I think they will. So a couple of tips I could find online for you guys heading out and especially those places like 395 or Truckee where the price is right around maybe just below $7. If you're headed over the hill, then it's important to plan your trip up to make sure that you're filling up just before you go. Hopefully you can get over the hill, then fill up then. Or a lot of people I'm hearing, seeing here filling up little gas tanks where it's here and more affordable and using them later down the road. Live from Gold Ranch, Zach Slopemaker, News 4, on your side. All right, it is expensive hitting the roads these days. Thanks, Zach. Well, if you're looking to head to Yosemite National Park for the holiday weekend, Tioga Pass is now back open for the season. The pass closes for the winter months. Every year, usually around November, it reopened this morning. Keep in mind, you will need a reservation to drive into or through Yosemite during peak hours, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. To book yours, go to recreation.gov. Well, there will be limited bus routes running on Memorial Day. RTC says they'll be operating on a Sunday level schedule. All of their administrative offices will be closed as well. RTC Regional Connector will not be running and RTC Customer Service will also be closed. To learn more or to plan your ride, go to rtcwashoe.com. Well, coming up, protests broke out outside the National Rifle Association's meeting today. The message from Texas Governor Greg Abbott coming up after the break. Plus, a popular event returning to Carson City this weekend where you can catch the Rockin' Rib Fest. Don't those look good? That is straight ahead. Those do look good. Weather today a little bit on the cloudy side, windy side. We have more Lakewood advisories in place again for tomorrow. And then the holiday weekend cool down really kicks in. Have the entire weather forecast straight ahead.